This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Happy Friday, the Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collisions. Center, Major Mortgage Man Cave, and uh, big show today. Some breaking news on the national level, which I'm sure you've heard about, and maybe you haven't. Uh, also on this day in history, predictions for the weekend coming up, and uh, as well as uh, we'll be joined on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline by a great friend. I literally watched her grow up through high school, well, in high school and on, but Selena Adelson Journey will join us. She is a uh, elementary administrator and also a children's author, and she's going to join us. She's got a book uh, that discusses um, a child's perspective of of COVID. It's actually it's really good. I've read most of it and uh, was a was a big fan. So um, she's going to join us here in a little bit. Uh, the breaking news is that. Uh, President Donald Trump has been taken to or is going to be going to Walter Reed Hospital for a what they're calling an abundance of caution after being diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. Uh, broke the news last night on uh, his Twitter and then um, him and the First Lady both have uh, come down with the COVID. And... I'll give you my thoughts on some stuff here in a second, but he is headed to uh, the president is headed to the hospital and uh, they've got a suite there. He can work uh, his, the white office, uh, white house office, press office saying that uh, it's an, out of an abundance of caution and that he will uh, keep working from there for the next few days. So um, news breaking um, in the last really half hour. Speaking of the COVID, let's give our Montana daily update. 13,805 or 55 confirmed cases, 360 new ones reported today, 186 deaths, 177 in the hospital, 9,569 recovered, 4,100 active. That includes a fourth in Yellowstone County again, over 1,000, 1,013. 134, Bighorn 95, uh, Rosebud 209, Roosevelt 248, Glacier 54 in Hill County, 607 in the Flathead, where Helena High plays tonight. 384, Cascade, 335, Missoula County, 145, Lewis and Clark County, 224 in Gallatin. So, see where there's like colleges and stuff and, 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 and stuff like that. Pig, pig numbers. Obviously we want everybody to be healthy. We want everybody to, uh, to, uh, to be good. So in, including our president, um, speaking of the COVID and sports, because we do try to focus on sports first here on the Jason Walker show. At least seven games have been uh, postponed or canceled for tonight. Belgrade at Great Falls, which we talked about yesterday. Lewistown at Sydney is postponed or canceled. Glendive at Billing Central is not happening. Red Lodge at Poplar. Browning at Dillon. Cutbank at Wolf Point. And uh, Loyola hosting Anaconda tomorrow. All sports on the Fort Peck and Blackfeet Indian Reservations are on hold. We've talked about that, uh, what, last week, I guess, or a week before, as uh, Blackfeet Nation issuing a 14-day uh, quarantine of the reservation. Fort Peck, 
following Fort Peck, of course, with, with Roosevelt County, where there's an abundance, uh, 100 less active cases today than there was yesterday, but still. Uh, so Butte Central, which has had two games. So they're playing tonight. Butte Central's going to be at home tonight. I think Libby. But the Maroons haven't played for two weeks. Their game next week it has already been canceled because they play Browning at Browning. So that's not going to happen. So instead, they're going to play a JV Livingston squad. Uh, Cut Bank, which was supposed to play Wolf Point tonight, has been moved to October 12th. Uh, all events involving teams from Sydney, including volleyball, postponed. Brockton schools announced this morning no practices uh, until at least the 19th. That's 17 days from now. Of course, that Fort Peck reservation where we talked about. Um, crazy. Crazy numbers, crazy things happening in sports. And unfortunately, we are going to see more of it. We talked about it on the show. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Um, we just, we've, we've known, you know, that there's going to be more and more cancellations, um, in sports for Montana. So there it is. Uh, we are going to make predictions and a uh, little bit of recap. The golf is wrapping up state a golf and uh, double a golf as well. I think the a is down in Butte, double a over in Missoula. Um, big Big night for the Capitol Volleyball Squad last night. They're now just uh, 61 straight wins as they rolled over Helena High. So we'll have predictions. we got On This Day in History coming up. Let's see if we have any, uh, do we have any, any golf results? I know there was some coming in as we went on. Uh, looks like the Bozeman High girls are going to repeat. Uh, what's that, three in a row, four in a row? Um... And by the way, the Glendive and Billing Central game was canceled because of a uh, COVID case at Glendive. All right, back to golf. Uh, Sentinel freshman Cade McDonough goes one under today. He was three under for the two days, and he is the double-A champ. Uh, Gallatin boys, the new school, will finish, I think, runner-up. Jordan Verge will go second. His brother Justice in there as well. And those two are pretty good golfers. That whole Gallatin boy squad, which won for Bozeman High last year, one state, are all over at Gallatin now. But Bozeman girls are going to win state. And uh, Cade McDonough, freshman from Sentinel, wins the boys' double-A state championship. That is awesome. Very cool. We'll get some uh, some golf updates hopefully by the uh, before we get uh, uh, the end of the show. All right, so here's what I wanted to. Uh, I don't really. I, I, I guess it's called venting. It, it it's honestly it it's pissed me off since last night, and I'm not going to hold back. I don't care who you support in the presidential race. I I I don't give a rip. But when the president of the United States and his wife come down with a very dangerous disease. Now is not the time to light up social media with comments such as, good, I hope they both die, and crap like that. Uncalled for. And just unnecessary. I mean, it's just ridiculously stupid to wish death because you don't like the president of the United States. You hope he dies. You freaking kidding me. Get the hell out of here with that. Look, there was a lot of people that didn't like eight years of the previous administration. They weren't lighting up social media, hoping that Obama died. There's a lot of crap going on in this country. Two weeks ago, Justice Ginsburg died. And people were all over social media giving their condolences. Both sides. Both sides of the freaking aisle. Nobody was out there saying good. There are people who worked 
for the previous administration and running for Congress and much more. Um, Zara Rahim, who was a former Obama staffer and Hillary Clinton's national spokeswoman in 2016, tweeted today, it has been against my moral identity to tweet this for the past four years, but I hope he dies. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? And like I said, I don't give a shit who you vote for. I don't care. And I don't care about cussing. You don't wish death on the President of the United States or his family. Forty percent. There was a poll taken today, and over 40% of confirmed Democrats said they hoped the President died. That's where we're at in this country, my friends. And it's bullshit. I'm not on radio, it's internet, I can say it. Even Joe Biden, who is a complete moron, tweeted out, this is a time to come together. Not a partisan. I mean, the the President of the United States is going to be admitted to the hospital for a few days as a precaution because he has COVID. Well, think about it. Would you rather be in the hospital or at home if you got COVID? They can do a hell of a lot more in a hospital than they can at your house. He's not transferred power to Vice President Pence. He's in good spirits. They said he has a little bit of congestion um, and really fatigued. Well, look at his schedule. And now everybody on, you know, on social media too. Well, he shouldn't have been at the debate. He shouldn't have done that. Really? Because you think he had it? And then there's other conspiracy theorists out there saying, oh, he's faking it. No, nobody's going to fake a major illness like this, dumbass. And if you want to debate me on it, call me right now. Tweet me, Facebook me, let's go. If you want the President of the United States or his family to die because of COVID-19, call me right now. I would love, love to hear from someone. Absolutely would love to rip you a new ass. I just can't even, I just can't even, I I, I can't even. What kind of sick individual are you to wish death on someone? Least of all, the president of the United States. Now, look, I'm not a huge Trump supporter. But he's still the president. And I make no bones about that I'm, you know, I don't like Governor Bullock. I don't want him dead. I'm more on the conservative side of life. And you've known this if you listen to this show. But I'm not going to wish death on anybody. And the fact of the matter is that there was people actually, people who worked for President Obama And Hillary Clinton saying, I hope he dies. Minutes after Trump tweeted early this morning, it was just after midnight Montana time, or uh, just before midnight, I'm, I'm sorry. And every one of those people who has wished death or said they hope he dies should be arrested. For the minorest crime of being a dumbass. All right. 
got that off my chest. I've been just livid. And you can, in my job, what I do, you can't stay off. As, I, I can't not be on social media. But social media has ruined this country. It has. I'm sorry. It has. We used to be able to have legit conversations with people who disagree with one another. And at the end of the day, we weren't wishing death on the president or pulling out guns and shooting each other or burning down buildings because you don't agree with something. I don't think back in 1963 there was anybody celebrating the fact that John F. Kennedy had just had his head blown off in Dallas. And I can tell you that the support in 19, what, 80, 81, when Ronald, 81, when Ronald Reagan was shot, there wasn't a whole lot of bipartisanship going, well, I hope he dies. But just because you don't like the president doesn't give you the, doesn't give you the right to say he hope he, you hope he dies. All right, we're going to talk about something positive. I got to get off of that, man. That's just, I'm so pissed at people right now. Just sickened, absolutely sickened with people in this country. We're going to talk about, well, it's still COVID related, but there's a great children's book coming out this month uh, written by a friend of mine. Her name is Selena Adelson Journey, and she is a uh, vice president or vice, pre- vice principal at an elementary school in Washington. She's written a book called When the City Went Quiet, and she will join us next when we return here. Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Oh, it is the finally Friday Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center here in the Major Mortgage Man Cave. And uh, got on this day in history, got predictions coming up. There was a couple of big double-A football games last night. We're going to recap those as well. And uh, I'll give you, like I said, my predictions for the weekend. And a huge on this day in history. So, on this October the 2nd. Um, we'll keep you updated on... President Trump, who is headed to Walter Reed Medical Hospital out of a, quote, abundance of caution after uh, coming down with uh, COVID this week. So him and the First Lady both. Uh, but we want to get to our first guest, uh, really our only guest today, on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. She is um, a vice principal. She is a cancer survivor. She's a great friend. And she's now a children's book author. It is Selena Adelson Journey. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks so much for having me today. It is. Uh, it's my pleasure. And well, really, I have to thank you because your your wonderful husband of how many years? Um, sixteen now. You've been married sixteen years. No, we've been married for eight years. Oh, but together. But we've for been together. Okay. Uh, so your yeah. wonderful husband, who has been with you side by side for sixteen years, took mm-hmm. you on a little. Um, you're going on a little getaway tonight which is yeah. much needed in this day and age. <laughs> yep. Yes. With the camper, we're headed to uh, the gorge here in um, over by Portland, Oregon. Nice. Um, and sure. I bring that up just because uh, you're literally taking time out of what your husband's doing something nice to do a radio show. So I appreciate that. Uh, Selena <laughs> Adelson Journey, our guest here, author of When the City Went Quiet. And we're going to talk about your book here in a second, but... Um, it, it is October. You are a cancer survivor. Uh, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling really good. I've, um, well, I guess about 16 years ago, I was diagnosed, and um, I'm a Montana native, actually, and received treatment in Salt Lake. And the doctor said it'd be a small blip in my life, and I was lucky enough that that was the case for me. So I've been a survivor for 16 years now. That is just awesome. And I've known you um, for a long time. I've known you since high school at Belgrade um, when uh, you used to babysit my kids. You're making yeah, me feel you're old here. Me. <laughs> uh-huh. you're, you're, you're making me feel old. That's, I mean, they're 22 and 20, and now you have your own two little ones. What are they, one and three? Yes, yes. It's awesome. Being a mom, is it something you always wanted to do? Actually, I was not sure, but my husband really wanted kids, and I've always been around kids as an educator, and so it felt right, and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. It's a crazy life, but I really enjoy it. Did you did you know in high school, though, that you wanted to be in education? No, I did not. I was actually in nursing school pre-cancer, and then after I got out of the hospital from all my treatments, I just couldn't go into nursing, so I uh, switched over to education, but that's fitting because my dad was a football coach and history teacher and high school counselor, and my mom was a principal as well, so it's something all my family has done. Super anyway. awesome. Uh, Selena Adelson Journey joining us here, Jason Walker Show. So you take care of, uh, you're the, what did, they, what did you tell me before we came on here? They call you the baby boss because you're the vice principal? Yes, <laughs> yes. Call me baby boss, the kids. It's, it's endearing and cute and sweet. That is just uh, super awesome. <laughs> Selena uh, Adelson Journey joining us. Mike Miller, Stay Farm Hotline. Uh, K through four are the kids that you, uh, you mainly deal with. Um, it was a weird spring, and it's a weird fall for those in education. And um, before I ask you any other questions, Selena, I've got to just say, as a, you know, my dad was a former teacher. He's back in, in administration now in, in schools. And I have nothing but respect for what school from the top down, teachers, administrators, everybody has to deal with right now. And it really started back in March for you guys. How odd Mm -hmm. was it in March? 
You know, I remember on March 13th, they said, you know, we're not going to come back to school for a couple weeks. And, you know, spring break was approaching. And so we kind of thought, well, this was going to be a small wave and a precaution and um, very, very temporary. And then all of a sudden, that temporary over time became very permanent. And through the spring, I would say we were doing what you call emergency teaching. We were just trying to get platforms up and running and kids access to the materials and resources that they need. So we did a lot of home visits and things like that. And now we're in, you know, October and we're in the same situation, but now we have better plans in place than we did in the spring. And this is becoming a part of the reality of public education at this time. It really is. And it's, it's an unfortunate one. And I talk to teachers here in Helena a lot about it that are coaches and trying to shuffle and, and deal. But when it first happened in March, and like you said, emergency teaching, but as an administrator, I mean, how hard was it for you to be able to remotely talk with teachers and, and then we'll get into the book because of the kids and it's such a, a young age of kindergarten through fourth graders? Yeah, as an administrator, um, it was heartbreaking. I mean, there were days that I was in the school and there was not a single teacher and there were certainly no kids. And it was trying to figure out how we were going to break down the barriers to get kids support. Because we know that kids that come from low socioeconomic status have um, no internet service or um, ability to go get support like lunch and stuff. So it was really about trying to support all kids, but also focusing on kids who just didn't have the resources to be able to make it. That's an interesting point that not a lot of people have brought up and not a lot of people really think about because you just assume that, oh, everybody's got access to the internet, but they don't. And so how much of a challenge has that been getting those kids not only fed, which is most important, but also be able to do their homework? Yeah, so for us, um, our district was really great. We started free um, free lunches age 0 to 18 every single day. And so in the morning, kids could pick up a breakfast and a lunch ready to go um, out at all the schools in our local area. Um, so we knew kids were getting fed. And then right away, we were able to order a, as many hot spots as we could. And we delivered those hot spots and one-to-one devices to, to students who couldn't um, otherwise come to the school and pick them up. So... We also sent, we have a high English language learner population out here, and so we were able to get some of our ELL leads and coaches and deliver those materials and speak another language to be able to support those families and getting their kids up and running with online learning. And for some that had no access, we did home delivery for paper packets for homework books every single week. Wow. Awesome job. Awesome. Selena Adelson, Journey, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. Uh, so during this first couple of uh, weeks of COVID, when did you decide, you know what, I need to write a book about this? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't. It wasn't the first couple of weeks. It actually wasn't until July. And so July, administrators have that time off. And I just was finally able to sit down and maybe breathe and take a breath and try to, you know, reflect on what all had happened. And I have spoke about it a little bit, but I saw the inequities um, that were happening with so many children, just in our case, but also just around the whole nation. And with that, some of the hardest conversations I had were with single single parents, particularly single mothers who were trying to work jobs to get food on the table, but also to be able to support their kids on online learning, not wanting them to get behind. And it was then that this book started to, um, you know, come to mind. And I think it was my own way of also dealing with being lonely and isolated away from my friends and family and the people that I work with at my job and the kids. And so I, I sat down and I wrote the pre-draft of this in about three hours on a Saturday night with um, a glass of wine. I think that gave me a little inspiration and I sent it out to six different publishers, and I heard back from two and was able to move forward with one. And that is San Juan Publishing, and that's, uh, my publisher is Kate Burke. She's just been phenomenal to work with, a wonderful, wonderful woman, and gives so much to her community. So the book is called When the City Went Quiet, 
And it follows a, a young lady, and I've got the, the book art up, um, but it follows a young girl and her single mom, like you mentioned. Uh, the first, I, I, what I've read in, anyway, and it's, it's unbelievable, and the uh, illustration, which we'll talk about her in a second, but un, uh, uh, it's amazing. It's, I wish I could draw. Um, but it talks about the first, really the first wave of how a, a young child and her single mom in New York dealt with COVID right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, it's, um, and it's pretty true to life, you know, when not being able to go play with your friends and is this stuff you heard from others or just everything that you knew that you were just like, this is going in the book. Well, part of it was what I had learned from talking to people, but also what I was experiencing in myself. And then, you know, being so close with students, um, and being able to talk through some of those emotions and having friends with young kids as well, I just took people's experiences and the stories that I had heard and brought them to life through through the words that I was able to um, create in the story. And it is about how um, a little girl, Estelle, and it's about her emotional experience with COVID and the lessons she learned beyond herself. Um, in this experience. And though this has been a very difficult and challenging experience for all of us, um, toddlers to adults to um, older people, there are lessons to be learned from this and that we can wrap around one another and support one another in this time. How did you come up with the name Estelle? I don't know. It just seems to mind. <laughs> Um, Estella <laughs> was my grandmother's name on my mom's side, my mom's mom. So, um, oh, okay. yeah, so it kind of, it, it stood there. Um, page 18, or at least on page 18 of what I've been reading, but, uh, you talk about they're at the, the mom and Estella are at a park and mm. in, in, in New York and talking about how being more socially connected because you're able to, you know, FaceTime and video chat with friends and, and, and grandma Harriet and that reminds me of the first couple of months of COVID when, you know, pick up for groceries for your family members or the elderly that can't make it out or helping to make masks or creating signs of encouragement uh, to hang up in the apartment window. I liked that, that, that section of the book because it took me back to when everybody cared about each other. Yeah. And we need to remember not uh, that we still need to care for one another, that we still have people who can't go out and get groceries and um, people who need need support and need to have encouragement, such as the, the little kids and the parents right now who are trying to homeschool and the parents, you know, they didn't go have, um, they don't have an education in terms of being a teacher and educator. And um, we have to give them signs of encouragement each and every day too. You're doing it. You're doing the best you can. Um, I love your descriptions, a cheeky raccoon, um, when you're talking about some animals, just some things that, that I took away from the book, but at the end of it, um, well, the, the, what I, I, like I said, what I've read, there's a lot of questions that, that Estelle has, and there's a great section in there at the end about how to read this book with your children, discussion questions, what to bring up, like how do we protect ourselves, how do we do the social distance, talking about emotions and, and things like that that are great for asking, like I said, parents for it to young kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my intention of that is that this book is meant to be read alongside a adult to have those conversations so that students or so that children can build understanding I think sometimes kids don't care to know or don't want to know, but when they feel that they're left in the dark, that's when you see some of the emotional impacts of COVID or trauma in general come out through anger or sadness or frustration. And so the more we can actually talk to children about the realities we're all experiencing, the more they're able to cope and come to you when they need support. Um, you talk about two in the book, and again, it's called When the City Went Quiet, but coping ideas, and I think there's like five of them, but, mm-hmm. you know, music, talking helps, and uh, just taking different breaths, uh, pressure points. That mm-hmm. was interesting. Actually, you had me doing the, the finger pyramids and squeezing my fingers today while I was talking about <laughs> uh, in my opening segment. So thank you for that. You helped me, not just a little kid. <laughs> Yay! You even walked away with a strategy. 
And that's exactly right. Is the strategies are not meant for just kids. They're meant for adults. They're strategies that I use sometimes in my own work. So I'm glad to hear that you took something away from it. Well, absolutely. Um, see, I read, <laughs> I learn. Um, how, what's the response been like for this book? Um, I pre-sold about 70 books already, and that's really to close people. Um, of course, nobody has a copy yet because we were, we were supposed to be coming out with a book yesterday, but we're nine days behind, so it should be out next week. will be available um, on my website, but you can pre-order um, now if you'd like. But for the people that have reviewed my book, and I've probably sent it out to about 15 or 20 people, um, nurses, school counselors, um, parents, a, a wide variety of people, it's been, it's, I've had very good responses. Um, from my book reviewers, and they are really excited to get it out. Um, tell me about Julie D, because how do you, A, how do you know her? Because I think she lives in California, um, but her uh-huh. bio is pretty cool too. And, and um, like I said, the illustrations in this book are so fantastic. Yeah. Oh, Julie D, where do I begin? So <laughs> Julie and I have about four years behind us. Julie is actually... Um, our nanny that's been with us since my first son was born, actually before he was even born, I knew her. We were we worked together at a school. And so much of this book I can see from Julie's lens. She is also a single mother trying to raise um, three children, and she put her life online to, on hold to be able to support and give her children everything that she can. And she is an amazing human and somebody that I trust my own children and through every triumph that she's had she has come out on the other side and so she's an amazing artist as you said and so when I started this book I said I want you to be my illustrator and she's never done it before and I'd never written a book so it seemed like a really great team and it turned out wonderful Um, and she lives here in Vancouver Washington but yes from California okay yeah she uh and like I said you know I've I, I love the pictures. I just wish that I could draw as somewhat decent, you know, not even decent. I mean, she just, it's unbelievable. And it takes me back, yeah. Selena, too. It's not this fancy illustration. It's, Mm-mm. it's more, it's, I don't, I don't want to know, real? Is that, is that a good word? Yes. I wanted the, the, we talked a lot about the illustrations. I wanted them to be realistic and warm and comforting and inviting to for children to just look at and to um, have them just, it, they're very rich and beautiful. And the book starts from the spring, but actually ends in the fall. And we plan on potentially a series of two more books coming out mm. that's going to take us through the rest of this experience. But yeah, they're just inviting. And I want them, wanted them to be very realistic and child-friendly. I didn't want them comical. There's a few other COVID books that have come out, and they're all about, you know, like um, ninjas and things like that. And I wanted this something that was more relatable through a child right now. Yeah, no, I completely love it. Uh, Selena, hashtag, or not hashtag, hyphen. Here, you give me your website. I've got it typed up, but I've, obviously <laughs> I can't read. That's okay. Um, it's <laughs> Selena dash Adelson dash journey dot com. Okay. Um, dash, not it. Okay. Hyphen, hyphen, dash, same thing. Not hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> no. So not hashtag. you've written this book and like you just said, you've got a, a couple more you're thinking about. What's, I mean, I, I can't even write a love letter anymore or, or I've run out of ideas to write my wife on her birthday cards and things like that. How do you write books? Oh, I've only written one, remember, but, um, <laughs> you know, for me, it, it was, it, I think if I was being honest and transparent, I really struggled in March and April. I struggled with um, not having the job that I usually had. I struggled because I couldn't allow my children to go play with the friends we usually had. Um, and my, my son, Brexton, was really, um, behaviorally was acting out in some ways, and that was it was so hard to cope with. And so um, this was part of that healing process for me. 
I sat down and I wrote a book and people journal and they do go for hikes and they do different things. And this was the first time that I sat down and I wrote it and I, a couple, I shared it and people were like, wow, this is, have you ever thought about getting this published? I was like, no, I haven't actually, but well, let's see, what do I have to lose? So, um, yeah, I love it, but maybe we'll have two more. (laughs) Um, Selena, dash adelson dash journey.com is the website and it's s o l i n a um yes i couldn't find the picture in time but there was a picture of you at our house and i th- it was faith and my brother was holding um faith up in my jeans it was super cute oh i think it was her first birthday party my oldest daughter um yeah i think which you would might have been be right 21 years ago now Wow. So much fun. Way back. I know, right? We did. We had a lot of fun times, though. We definitely did. Oh, absolutely. Um, Yeah, there was, I think you actually took the picture. I have a picture of uh, my dad, my brother, me, and then my son, Bob. Um, He was just a baby, but we were all in the deck. So it was like three generations of the Walker boys. I got to find that picture, too. Pictures everywhere. Um, So neat. But yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you're doing well. I. I, I love this book, um, what I've read. I can't wait to read the whole thing. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best. And it's just, it's so cool. And I, I have so many other questions that I just, like, are you guys in school right now? Or are you doing half, uh, half no. remote? Or? No, we were preparing to switch to remote actually next week. But our numbers spiked after five weeks here in Clark County. They suddenly spiked. And so the health department said, nope, you can't go back. And Mm. I think that's one thing that people don't understand that so much of this is on the educators and the boards to decide, but the health department really run a huge piece of being able to go back or not. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Is this book going to be required reading in your school? No, no, but I am. (laughs) um, No, but I will be donating um, several books to to the school counselors here in our district, as well as um, our library. Okay. So I have talked, Selena, to, like I mentioned, high school coaches here in Montana that also teach high school, not just football or, or other sports. But you're in the kindergarten through fourth grade, and I want to know when you do get back to class, how tough is it going to be? Because I don't know if Washington's the same as Montana, but I don't know if, you know, how, how do you have a kindergartner or first grader keep their mask on for six, seven, eight hours a day? That's going to be incredibly hard, and we're going to build in mask breaks for the kids. Um, The reality is of going back to school is we want the kids back in school, but people need to understand that school is not as we know it anymore, Um, and and there's not going to be lunchrooms here. We have to note where people are sitting every single day so that if we have to contact trace, we know who's been in contact with those kiddos. This is going to be a whole new set of experiences for little kids. And I think in some ways it could cause, I don't want to say maybe secondary trauma. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what happens as they come. But I want to encourage people as we prepare to go back to school that we try to do this in a fun and engaging way because the kids are going to pick up on how we feel about returning so if we can stay positive and say we're in this together, we can do these hard things um, and have, you know, your goose wings or out or, you know, you mask up like a raccoon every time before you get ready to walk around the hall or you put a stamp on your hand and you have to wash that stamp off before you get to eat your lunch. If we can do fun things like that, I think that we will only better our children through this experience and not make them so um, nervous to return. That is very well said. Um, Perfect way to wrap it up. Uh, You are an adult now. You're a mom, two kids, but you still are like that little 17 year old girl in, in, in my eyes. So I feel like, (laughs) I feel like I need to protect you somehow. I don't know why, but um, just, I've always loved you. So um, tell you, you. thank you so much for reaching out to me to do this. It was just, Super exciting to catch up again and tell your brother hi for me. I will. Um, Tell your husband thank you for letting us borrow you for today uh, for a little bit on your your romantic getaway. But um, (laughs) 
You know, you're a Montana girl when you're going to the woods for a vacation. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, well, and you're a Montana girl because you still have your Montana phone number. Oh, I do. I haven't changed it since high school. Pathetic, I know. <laughs> wow. No, that's awesome. That's, I love that. Um, yeah. Very cool. Selena, appreciate it. The book, again, it's called uh, When the City Went Quiet. You need to order it. SelenaAdelsonJourney.com with the hyphen in between the names. Um, and you can look it up on the website, but, uh, on my website, jasonwalkershow.com. When the city went quiet, order it today. It'll, uh, ship out in October, the middle of the month. I love it. Thank you so much and, uh, continued success. Stay safe and, uh, and thank you again. Okay. I wish you well. Thank you. That is Selena Adelson journey. My friends, great, great friend of mine, um, and the family, uh, just love her to death, but get that book. When the city went quiet, and it's selena adelson journeycom See, I can do this. Um, great book. All right, we're going to come back. When we do, I got predictions for you. We're going to recap a couple of games last night. Another game just got canceled in the state, and uh, we'll do it when we come back. Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com <laughs> Final segment on a finally Friday, Jason Walker Show. Capital Collision Center brings us to you each and every day, and we need to bring you to them if you've been in an accident. Um, the customer service is so is so unmatched. It's uh, I can't believe how I, I I can't even describe how great the customer service is. When you take your vehicle to Capital Collision Center. They will send you a text message multiple times a week to let you know where they're at in conjunction with repair of your vehicle. That's how much they care. And they'll call you. And the, the customer service, un, unmatched, Capital Collision Center on Euclid in Helena. Uh, all right, so a couple of big games last night. And uh, I picked Gallatin, but Skyview has won two in a row. After losing 22 straight, the... Uh, Falcons have now won two straight after they got a big win last night uh, over Gallatin. And then the Glacier and Hellgate played. 
as well. And it was, um, it was a, uh, it, there was not a whole lot of defense played last night. And was it a 58-34, or 54-38 game? And uh, it, was, it was not really close. Jake Rendina, there's some conflict. Some, uh, somebody said he had over 300 yards receive, uh, oh, and another one said he had over 270. So all we know is that he had seven rushing touchdowns. Um, and the MHSA archives and record books has not been updated in two years. So imagine that because MHSA is on top of everything. Uh, anyway, the junior from uh, Glacier scored seven touchdowns and had nearly 300 yards rushing. I mean, this is, that's, he's got 15 touchdowns. He's had games of four and four and then seven. That's through four games. So, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. But uh, a big win last night for uh, the Wolfpack, who are now 4 0. Helena High looks to go 4 0 tonight, as does Sentinel. And you've got Sentinel uh, in action as uh, they play. Um, I know it. It's right on the top of my tongue. That other school over there. <laughs> Big Sky, wow, is Crosstown, Sentinel and Big Sky. Jordy Hansen's going to be at that game. We'll talk to him Monday about it. Um, volleyball last night we mentioned as well, the uh, Crosstown battle as uh, the Capitol girls have now won 61 straight. All right, let's do our predictions for football. Oh, we do have golf, final. Uh, double A, I know for sure, it just came in. Sentinel's Cade McDonough we talked about. Bozeman, Sammy Yates are your individual champs. McDonough on the boys' side, Yates on the girls' side. Sentinel boys, and then Bozeman girls win the team title. It, Sentinel boys win by six shots over Gallatin. But a second-place finish, the first trophy in Gallatin high school history, goes to the Bozeman boys, or Gallatin boys golf team who finished second. Glacier third. And then Bozeman girls go number one. West girls number two. And then senior girls number three. Butte girls four, Capital girls five. The Capital boys, let's see, one, two, three, four, finished in fifth. Senior boys in fourth. So... Uh, 406mtsports.com will have everything related to uh, to that you want. Let's see here. What else? Individual. Did we get to that? Yeah, we. Uh, Cade McDonough. Jordan Verge finishes in second. Justice Verge tied for third. Uh, Jordan was... So McDonough goes three under. The only player on the boys' side under par for the tournament. Four-shot win over Jordan Verge. And then six shots back of that. Uh, Justice. Joe Opitz ties for fifth. Uh, Eli Groeschel, a CMR, also tied for third with uh, Justice Verge, the highest placing Electric City or uh, Capital City would have been on the boys' side. Kaz Bloomquist, I played golf with that kid. He's so good. Uh, he was 18 off the pace, finished in 13th, the uh, lone top 15er. All right, uh, and then on the girl side, Sammy Yates, number one. Bozeman teammate, uh, Cooper Nahr, second. And then Kenzie Walsh of senior and Marcella Mercer of flathead finish tied for third. Uh, Capital City, you got Seeley Chapman out of Helena High in 10th, just 12 off the pace. Lauren Williams in 11th. She's funny. Um, great family, too, the Williams. But uh, they're the only two from the capital city in the top 15. So there you go. All right. Uh, we mentioned there was another game canceled tonight. Hot Springs White Sulphur canceled tonight. That'll be played October 10th. So a week from, or tomorrow, it'll be played a week from tomorrow on the 10th. So Hot Springs and White Sulphur Springs will play next week. And COVID has already caused some issues 
Uh, Belgrade at Great Falls is canceled. Lewistown at Sydney. Glendive at Billings Central. Red Lodge at Poplar. Browning at Dillon. Cutbank at Wolf Point. And Loyola hosting Anaconda have all been canceled and or postponed. So, there you go. And I know we're having some issues on Facebook, so you can go to jasonwalkershow.com. We'll have the whole show uploaded uh, here in a little bit. All right, let's get to predictions. I got Butte at Capital. Bruins get a second straight win. I just think they're that much better than, than Butte right now. Helena High is at Flathead. Um, Flathead's not good. Helena High is. Bengals roll. They'll be 4-0. Whitehall at Jefferson. This one counts. They played a non-conference game last month um, in which Jefferson lost with 18-16, I think. I think the Panthers win tonight, though, when it matters. Townsend is at three forks. The Bulldogs are going to cruise. And then Hamilton at Sea Falls. Top five matchup in Class A. Um, I got Hamilton winning on the road, but that's it should be a good game. Both teams are going to find out how real they are. So there you go. Uh, today is October the 2nd. It is National Custodial Workers Recognition Day, Fried Scallops Day, Manufacturing Day, Body Language Day, Produce Misting Day. You have a day for those misters, like it uh, the scare the crap out of you when you're in the, the produce section, and then the sprinklers come on. Um, name your car day and World Smile Day. Did you name your car yet? Your first car especially? I didn't name my first. Uh, the one I currently have, I've named, I've named her Tiffany. I just like it. 1876, British Open, St. Andrews. Bob Martin wins. Dave uh, Davy Stroth refused to take part in a playoff. They both finished 176, and then Davy said, yeah, I'm not playing any more holes, so Bob Martin wins. R- refused to play. <laughs> wow. 1908, Cleveland Naps pitcher, Addie Joss, a perfect game. 1916, his third start in five days. Remember when I said pitchers used to be men? Uh, Philly uh, right-hander Grover Cleveland Alexander records his 20th century MLB record 16th shutout of the year, making his third start in five days. 1921, Babe Ruth, 59th home run, then a record. 1938, Bob Feller strikes out 18 in a loss. 1950, Bob Shaw, Chicago Cardinal, sets the NFL record with five TD receptions. Uh, the quarterback, Jim Hardy, had six touchdown passes. 1963, Sandy Koufax struck out World Series record then, 15. 1966, Koufax would win his 27th game of the year. And I have... i got to get this hung up, my, my Sandy Koufax autographed picture. Got to get that... Uh, this, uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. St. Louis pitcher Bob Gibson on this date, 1968, would set a new baseball World Series record by striking out 17. 1970, 14 members of the Wichita State football team, as well as 17 admins and supporters, were killed in a plane crash in the Rockies. 1972, Expos pitcher Bill Stoneman with his second career no-hitter. He beats the Mets. It was the first no-hitter ever pitched in Canada. 1981, 17-year-old gelding Behaven Jerry, the oldest winning racehorse in modern times, sets the record for most career starts with 307. How about that? Um, 2016, Vin Scully called his final game for the Dodgers after 67 seasons. And he just joined Twitter last month. 1945, Don McLean was born. Singer-songwriter, American Pie. 1948, Chris Ledoux was born, passed away in 2005. Also dying on this date, 1973, Pavo Nermi, the Flying Finn, nine Olympic gold medals. And 2017, I can't believe it's been three years already, Tom Petty died of an overdose at the age of 66. That is on this day in history. Uh, I'm trying to get to this. Here we go. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. The walk-off is brought to you by Cafe Zydeco. Make sure you stop by 625 Euclid in Helena. They are open from 11 to 8 tonight and 9 to 3 tomorrow. Um, unbelievable food. Get some, uh, get some great stuff. It, it, it's one of the top, it's fourth MSN ranked Cafe Zydeco fourth 
in the nation in the top 35 for uh, Zyde, uh, for uh, Cajun food. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so stop by. Walk off. Good luck to all the teams that play in this weekend. Congratulations to uh, Cade McDonough, Sammy Yates from Sentinel and Bozeman, respectively, for winning golf championships on the AA. Uh, the Sentinel boys and the uh, Bozeman girls winning team titles. And uh, go 406mtsports.com tomorrow for our, or later for all your Class A updates. Uh, uh, who wins those as well? Big games tonight across the uh, state in uh, multiple, multiple sports. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Okay. Um, I was going to talk about this Wood Bat League. Maybe we'll do it next week. Um, wood Bat Expedition League. We, try, it's going to be in Butte. It's trying to get into other Montana cities. We'll talk about it a little bit more next week. But I uh, just saw this tweet too. Uh, Michael Moore, the fat slob director, uh, took to Twitter today to proclaim his thoughts, quote, his thoughts and prayers are with COVID-19 following President Donald Trump and Melania testing positive for the coronavirus. So this goes back to what I talked about at the beginning of the show. Don't be an ass. I don't care. I just don't care who you vote for. I really don't. But when the President of the United States comes down with a serious illness, not the time to say, I hope he dies. Like multiple people have done. Multiple. Over 40% of Democrats polled today across the country hopes the president dies. Don't be a dumbass. Okay? Don't be a complete loser. Because that's what you're, you're going to be. Um, unbelievable people that would say that just stop. We had a great show today for the most part. Selena Adelson journey, get her book, go to Selena hyphen Adelson hyphen journey.com. It's called when the city went quiet. And it's a, it's about how to talk with kids and school age kids, especially about COVID and the coronavirus. Great book. Thanks to her for joining us on her day off today. Um, Barry Abrams, Scott Evans, great guests this week. Kyle Mahelish, who else did we talk to? Jordy Hansen, Sean Gleason. We'll have Jordy on Monday. We'll recap the weekend. Stay safe. Best wishes to the President of the United States of America. We'll be back Monday at 4. Have a great, great weekend, everybody. This is the Jason Walker Show. We'll see you over at jasonwalkershow.com, too. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.